Wouldn't it be cool if we could predict how people will behave in the future and also change their behaviour? Well, with a little knowledge about attitudes and how they're related to behaviour, you can. Since World War II, there's been a lot of interest in looking at how attitudes are formed, what effect they have, and how you might go about changing them. People thought that influencing attitudes might be particularly useful in the war effort. Propaganda was used by governments to get the public to support the war efforts at home by getting them to change their behaviours, maybe drive less to save fuel or invest their money in war bonds. And it was also used in an effort to attempt to get people in enemy countries to rise up against their own governments. People also hoped that understanding attitudes would help us unravel a range of social behaviours such as discrimination, aggression, voting patterns and religious activities. In recent times, the focus has been on the application of what we know about attitudes to understand why people behave the way they do. For example, like exercising regularly or giving up smoking. Or how political campaigns can influence voters, what makes advertising more effective, and what the public thinks about important topics like climate change. So, what is an attitude? Sometimes people use the term attitude to refer to whether someone has a positive or negative personality as in they have a bad attitude. But that's not what we mean by attitude. According to Russell Fazio, an attitude researcher who published this paper in 1986, he said that when we talk about an attitude, we're talking about an association between a behaviour or object and an evaluation. Himmelfarb and Eagley suggested that we can think about an attitude as having three components, beliefs, feelings and behavioural tendencies. We refer to this as the tripartite model because it has three parts. For example, let's imagine I have a positive attitude about Bollywood films. In terms of my belief, maybe after talking to my friends about Bollywood films, I could believe that those films are entertaining. In terms of my feelings, watching Bollywood films may make me feel good. Finally, my positive attitude may include behavioural tendencies. This might mean that I'd be willing to watch Bollywood movies. Now, it might be helpful to talk about what attitudes are not to clarify what we mean by a definition of attitudes. Sometimes people confuse attitudes with values. Values are your judgment of what is important in life. Values are broad and abstract, and they're not necessarily linked to a particular thing or behaviour. For example, you might value achievement in life. Attitudes by definition though are linked to a specific thing. So if you value achievement or doing well in life, you may have an attitude of doing well in this course. Opinions are also sometimes confused with attitudes. An opinion is a verbal expression of an attitude. It's what we say our attitude is. So if this is the case, why is an opinion different from an attitude? Well, one of the reasons why opinions might be different from attitudes is that sometimes what we say does not match what we think. Let's think of a hypothetical scenario that might illustrate this. Imagine you've recently met someone and started dating them. It's time to have dinner at their parents' house and it's the first time you're meeting the parents. You arrive and your date's father starts telling you he's prepared his special meal and that he hopes that you'll like it. The food comes out to the table and as the roast chicken is proudly presented, to your horror, you realise your date has forgotten to mention to their parents that you're a vegetarian. Now, one option here is to accurately express your attitude and say that you're a vegetarian and won't eat the meal because you won't enjoy it. The alternative, perhaps to manage the impression that you create, is to express a different opinion and say how much you love roast chicken. So, Sometimes we express an opinion that's different to our true attitudes due to social pressure, fear or sanctions, or because we're not thinking about our actual attitude at that particular point in time. Finally, attitudes are also sometimes confused with schemas. Remember that schemas are our mental representations of how things are. For example, they store our scripts for what happens at particular events and our knowledge about what certain groups of people are like. Attitudes, on the other hand, by definition suggest how people feel about objects and behaviours. Schemas don't always have this feeling component, and so they can be different to attitudes.